Glaber Torres knows what it takes to be a Yankee. Here's why they should not trade him. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias, and with me as always is my producer, Steve Granado. Steve, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, Stace. <laughs> happy Tuesday, everybody out there. Thanks for clicking on the show here today. Coming up on today's show, there was a very interesting athletic survey asking baseball fans their thoughts on the 2023 season and moving forward. They talked about the Yankees in there, and they also talked about just the state of baseball. We're going to get to that stuff later on in the show. But first, Stacey, I don't know if this is news. Maybe it is. Glaber Torres is a YouTube channel now, and he's been posting here over the last couple of weeks. This show he's calling The Glay Way. Cool enough. Clever. Um, <laughs> clever. Clever. I like it. But so there was a very interesting thing that he said in the very first episode, very first video that he released, full video that is, uh, that came out uh, towards the tail end of last week during Thanksgiving week. And uh, it kind of piqued my interest. I watched it and he said something at the top I thought everybody should hear. Let's go ahead and take a listen to that. I really love playing baseball every, every time. I hate injuries for that reason. Uh, I feel like I start a little bit earlier than, than normal. It's great for the body. And, and just be prepared really well. I mean, during the season after the first half, body starts feeling a little bit tired. I think this opportunity on the, on the gym to get yourself capable to play more than 162 game, I believe, because always we play for postseason and World Series. Stacey, I really liked that. Prepare your body to play for more than 162 games. I, I don't know how you feel about that, but that, that that was the part to me that really stuck out. Oh, yeah. I mean, you want you don't want a player to just think regular season. You want them to be that type of player who maybe not the extreme that Derek Jeter was where, you know, you don't win a World Series, you're a failure. He was kind of that way. But I like this whole aiming for the postseason from Glaber. You want to hear that from your players. Yeah, I'm not in that uh, you lo don't get to the World Series, you lose everything camp. I'm more in the Giannis Antetokounmpo, like every season's not a failure thing. You know, like you can learn yeah. from everything. And and he did go on to talk about that later on. Um, I'll link, leave a link to his YouTube channel. He talks about a lot of stuff. He does a lot of those kind of like driving and talk things. And uh, there's some fluff in there, obviously. And sure. it's, you know. A couple of YouTubers or a couple of players rather are starting to turn into YouTubers uh, and kind of cover a lot of their stuff. But uh, he has talked about to, um, you know, the preparation stuff and uh, where his mind is at. And there's, you know, there's some cool stuff in there. So check it out if, if you want to. But Stace, I, I think this kind of leads to a, a broader discussion on Glaber Torres, who, of course, we talk about a lot. And he had an incredible 2023, especially at the plate. He was he was awesome last season and a big leader on this team. Now that he's getting into his last arbitration year. What's Glaber Torres to this team now? Obviously he had to kind of play above his weight last season and he right. did, mm -hmm. but where do you see Glaber fitting in for 2024? Well, I, I, he's definitely one of the leaders on the team. He's made himself one of the leaders on the team. And you love to see that because the whole thing about Glaber Torres was how he was kind of the baby on the team. You know, Glaber Torres is only 22. And that was the running joke where Glaber Torres is only 23. And, you know, he's getting older now. He's, <laughs> he's one of the veterans, dare I say, on that team uh, compared to a lot of people. And I just love Glaber. I really do. Like, yes, there are some moments where he has some boneheaded moves in the field and maybe some base running mistakes. But, you know, I, I don't cringe when I see him at the plate. I'm actually happy to see Glaber at the plate because I feel like he can do things. And he really stepped up in a big way this season, past season, when they needed him to with so many guys who were either out with injuries or just not performing the way they were supposed to. I agree. Yeah, he did step up in a massive way. Um we both feel that the Yankees should not trade Glaber Torres. I'm going to make a quick pitch on my argument side, and I want you to, to do the same, Stace. As far as I'm concerned for Glaber, I'm right there with you. He's a leader on this team. Like, he, he's obviously not uh, Judgeonian levels <laughs> of, of impact on this club, both, you know, mentally and physically, but he's not that far off. Like, he, I think he is, like, a true leader 
uh, of this club. Like he he's the leader of the infield, if not him and Rizzo, right? Like oh. it's him and Rizzo that are obviously pretty pertinent to this club's success. Yeah. Um. So for my money, that plus the fact that if you traded Glaber, yes, you would have, you know, that's your best major league asset that you're semi willing to part ways with. I understand that. But also, if you do trade Glaber, then you're really taking a, a, a full-fledged, no-holds-bar on Oswald Peraza with now a potential spot open at third. Yeah. You know, like obviously DJ is going to play third this year, but, uh, you know, potentially play some first if Rizzo goes down or whatever have you, however it shakes out. But like that's that's putting a lot of faith in Oswald Peraza, which, hey, of course, I've said a thousand times on the show, I think very highly of Oswald Peraza. I've watched him play a lot, and mm-hmm. I really, really like him. And I think he's going to be a pretty darn good major leaguer. But is he now? Are the Yankees trying to win now? I don't know. I think an extension is a better conversation starter than a trade is for Glaber Torres. Yeah. And I feel like Glaber is the perfect guy to be the mentor to guys like Oswald Peraza and Oswaldo Cabrera and, um, you know, the rest of the guys who are the same. <laughs> Yeah, Venezuelan <laughs> nationality, yeah. because that's a really, you know, it's not easy coming here and being a major league baseball player. There's a lot of things you have to navigate and Glaber has done it so well. Um, you know, there are people out there who like to complain about players who don't speak English and have to have the uh, interpreters with them. And, you know, I always have to explain to people that they know how to speak English most of the time. They know how to communicate with their teammates, but they don't want their words misconstru- misconstrued because English is not their first language. And it would be the same for you if you went to a different country and wasn't really strong with that language. And Glaber does his best to uh, speak English and get his point across. And he's just, he's a really good role model for those kids. I really feel like he is. And I feel like that the Yankees know that I feel like they know that. And I and I feel like, yes, he is probably one of their best assets to probably trade away. But I know that there's something in the back of their heads thinking, we probably need to keep him around to help these kids out, you know? Yeah, I mean, I know firsthand experience that Oswald Peraza and Oswaldo Cabrera think very highly of other Venezuelan ballplayers. They just do. They told me that. So I, I know for a fact that that is the case. <laughs> um, so having a guy like Glaber around, is massive if you want them to feel comfortable. Um, Oswaldo is more comfortable English-wise than Oswald is. Like, if you want to yeah. go down that route, Oswald still feels the need for an interpreter, which is completely fine and completely Perfectly valid. Fine. Yes. Um, but yeah, just from that front. Um, yeah, yeah I, I love that you brought that up because I was going to bring that up too. That that's he's super important for those p- players in particular, and especially if you want those players to be a big part of your team, which they should be then having a guy like Glaber around is important, let alone his bat, man. Like his bat was huge last year. Like if you're like, if you don't care about any of that stuff, you're like, Oh, whatever, Steve, like, Oh yeah, I need a friend on the team to make me feel better. (laughs) If that means nothing to you. Okay, fine. Just his bat. Yeah. Was the, maybe the best part of the lineup last season (laughs) consistently or one of the most consistent. Yeah. 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 You need it. You need it. And I think when I said he was playing above his weight last year, what I mean by that is you don't need Glaber to be the guy. What do I always preach on this show, Stace? That players should not be made to do something that they're not supposed to be doing. Right. Right. Clark Schmidt should not be your ace. And that's completely <laughs> fine. That is completely fine. Albert Abreu should not be your closer. And that's completely fine. He doesn't have to be. He isn't going to be. Right. <laughs> not tendered. But yeah. good luck, Albert. Nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nonetheless, you don't need Glaber Torres to be your leading run producer. Right. Right. You don't need Torres to back clean up and be 120 RBIs. That's what Aaron Judge is for. He obviously had to be clean up on a couple of occasions this season because of unforeseen circumstances. But you yeah. don't need him to be. And if you surround Glaber Torres with other players that can fill those roles, Glaber can slide in. And if he performs the way he does and he isn't expected to be the guy. That yeah. is a huge, huge asset for you. That's exactly it. He doesn't have to be the guy, but if he's asked to be the guy, he kind of steps up in that situation, you know, and he doesn't put so much pressure on himself. Um, so that's a good that's a good trait to have also. And then when he's not the guy, he's still really good because you're talking about judge and everything else. And, and you yeah. know, 
I feel like sometimes that helps players that if the focus isn't really on them, they can be however they want to be. And it kind of helps them in a way. Um, So let's just hope in 2024 that um, things are a little back to normal with some of the other guys in the lineup and Glaber just continues to do what he's been doing. Yes, I agree. And look, as far as major league baseball is concerned, one of the most uh, influx positions in all of the game is second base. So if you have a lockdown second baseman, yes, I know the defensive issues, which I don't think are that big of an issue. No, it just frank. feels it just feels like when he does it's in make the a moments mistake, and when it happens. Yes. Yep. Yeah. But all in all, having a second baseman you can pencil into the lineup every day is a luxury. Mm-hmm. And the Yankees have that. They don't have other luxuries, obviously. I mean, they have judge, as we know, but like there are luxuries that they wish they could have, but they have one right here. Could you get something for him? Of course. Is that the smartest move? I don't think so. He's mm-hmm. proven. He's pretty darn proven. Let us know how you're feeling about it. I'm sure you will. Let us know in the comment section here on YouTube. Uh, of course, while you're down there, drop a question for Fan Mail Friday. That's every Friday we answer your questions on the show, just like you answer our questions every day. Of course, you can join the Lockdown Yankees Insiders Club as well. Link in the episode description to a 14-day free trial where you get a whole bunch of perks, including Fan Mail Friday priority. Try it out for a couple of weeks and see if you like it. All right. Athletic did a survey of Major League Baseball fans. What do they think about the Yankees and more? That's next. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. It's a bye week for the Giants, mercifully, but not for the Jets, who are going to be at home in MetLife Stadium against the Atlanta Falcons. Now, the Falcons and Jets are close record-wise, and the odds are close as well, with the Falcons only being favored by three points, with the over-under set at 34 for now. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Back here on today's Locked On Yankees. Hey, everydayers out there, don't forget to check out the Locked On Sports Today, 24-7 streaming YouTube channel. Look up Locked On Sports Today or look up like Locked On Sports Streaming or whatever, live. It'll pop up. YouTube's great about search, by the way, just if you didn't know that. Um, So check that out. Stacey, uh, I'm leaving a link to this in the episode description. You guys should totally read it. It's super interesting stuff. The Athletic doing their fan survey. They do this every year. It's uh, the Athletic's 2023 MLB fan survey results. What you thought about 23 baseball topics. And uh, as the caveat is, always with the Athletic, you need a subscription. So there's that. Uh, oh, it is Monday. I was going to say maybe they have a Cyber Monday deal. Drat. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so again, I left the link in the episode description. They talked about the Yankees. Uh, there's some Yankees in this. And of course, uh, there's other things that we're going to get through here today. Over 13,500 respondents in this bad boy. Uh, we're going to go through a couple of them. Stacy, this first one asking who is the best position player in MLB right now? The number one vote getter was Ronald Acuna Jr. at 49.9% of the vote. Bringing up fifth, Stacy was Aaron Judge at 4 point nine your thoughts on this and do you agree with Acuna being the number one player right now I agree with that I would agree with that position player wise definitely um he's such an exciting player my god and 40 70 who wh- what yeah, um <laughs> I mean that that was it's hard to argue against that from last year let alone his defense yeah like oh my god um you know I'm not I'm not surprised that Judge is in there uh I think you know last year he probably would have been higher I would assume he'd be higher because of everything that he did but um you know considering how much time he missed the fact that he's there in fifth place is pretty good (laughs) i I mean it's 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 a good group of people it's acuna Betts, otani as a hitter only seager another good player and aaron judge i mean can't go wrong with that yeah no i agree uh acuna bet i mean Betts. i think is awesome too i love mookie Betts, especially considering he moved to second base a little bit this season too (laughs) Um, and let alone what he did for Team USA. Yeah. But Acuna's obvious. It's obvious, dude. Yeah. Uh, and most, most, I mean, half of baseball fans are like, yep. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, this one, Stacy, however, a little bit better. 
Who is the best starting pitcher in MLB right now? Runaway. Garrett Cole, 52.2%. Are you shocked? Maybe not at him being the best pitcher in baseball, starting but, pitcher, but, but, but by the number. Percentage. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised by the percentage. Um, although the 11.2 for Spencer Strider, I'm thinking that a lot of Braves fans read The Athletic. <laughs> sure. Not that he's bad, because he's not bad at all. It's just kind of funny. No. Um, but yeah, no, I Cole being number one doesn't shock me. But yes, the percentage, that's, I mean, over 50%. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 52.2%. Blake Snell, the other Cy Young winner, 7.1%. Uh, I think maybe it's just the longevity side of things that may be bringing that number down. Obviously, Cole is just like a straight-up ace workhorse. I think it's also the San Diego thing because the team didn't do well. Like, I feel like possible because Cy Young is writer voting, and this is people voting, and people have different perspectives of baseball than writers do. So that I feel like that's why Snell didn't get as big a vote there yeah i could see that i could see that yeah. for sure um zach wheeler brings up fourth corbin burns in fifth um we're a little light on aces right now in major League yeah Baseball. yeah we're a little light on them because it feels like pitching is changing where it feels, it feels like guys kind of like have great seasons like a great season and then return to normalcy a little yeah. more than normal yeah yeah like there's <sighs> It's not like it used to be where your ace was like the guy who was like really good for like five to seven years. They had like incredible straight, straight runs yeah, of just like being think, amazing. Like Dylan Cease. Mm -hmm. Dylan Cease's 2022 is unreal. His 2023 fell off a cliff. Right. And you're like, yeah. what happened? Like yeah. the stuff is there, right? And then you're going, well, his velo's down a little bit. And you're just like, oh, what? what's going on with Dylan Cease? It's um, also guys are throwing a lot harder, which puts more wear and tear on the arm. So they're not lasting as long. It's yeah. like a whole bunch of There's a lot going on things. There. Yeah. There will be there will be studies on the ace, the the loss of the ace uh, <laughs> in Major League Baseball. I think it's still valid and still around. And they're still going to oh, be sure. going for the ace, obviously. But I feel like there's just a lot less. Yeah. I don't know. Let us know how you're feeling about that. Of course, and everything we talk about here today. Um, this one, Stacy, which non-Otani free agent position player would you most like your team to sign? Number one, runaway. This is surprising to me. Cody Bellinger, runaway, 47.7%. Matt Chapman at 12.4. A guy I think is not getting enough love. Reese Hoskins at 7.9. I think it's probably because Hoskins obviously missed all of last season. Lourdes Gurriel Jr., 7%. And Jorge Soler at 6.1. But Belly... Yeah. It's not just Yankee fans who want them. Yeah. Well, I feel like I also, it also feels like fans will just see the numbers and see the names and see how, oh, everyone's interested in him and they'll think the same thing. <laughs> they'll be influenced by the news that they're seeing because, you know, a lot of these people aren't really watching some of these guys <laughs> and they're just sure. seeing the choices and being like, okay, like, no offense, but. <sighs> I will That's also I say on the flip side of that, Devil's Advocate, it is the athletic, which is a paid service it's not that like trade rumors or something that is true uh, where everyone reads it uh it's it is a, a more dedicated sports fan that's true because lord escorial jr like yeah but wow kind of surprised <laughs> yeah that one's a surprise again i i don't think reese hoskins get enough love I, I really think it's just that he missed 2023 it's yeah yeah i mean because like if he 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 should be a philly yeah with yeah. harper moving to first seemingly full-time now and hoskins out like you really thought Reese Hoskins was going to be a Philly for a long time. Yeah. There's just bad timing. Mm -hmm. Really bad timing. Um, yeah. But yeah, not, 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 not just uh Yankees fans, that one Corey yeah. Bellinger. How about that? <laughs> I also think that's kind of tells you where we're at free agency wise, just as a whole. Oh yeah, definitely. Cause uh, you asked them a year ago, Cody Bellinger wasn't anywhere near that. <laughs> Crazy, crazy what a year does. Um, and then this last one here, uh, as far as the Yankees are concerned, of course, we're going to get to the MLB uh, specific ones later. This one, Stacy, which 2023 non playoff team are you most certain will make the playoffs in 2024? The Yankees, number one, 20.7%. The Cubs follow up at 19.2%. Then it's the Mariners, Pod Squad, and then the Big Red Machine. Mm. Uh, the Yanks, Stace, 207 edging out the Cubs. Obviously, I thought the Cubs were going to make it this season. I was buying on the Cubs this year, and then they fell apart in September. Uh, but the Yankees, baseball fans, thinking they're primed for a comeback next season. As much as baseball fans hate the Yankees, they love to hate 
they love rooting against them in the playoffs and they find the playoffs boring when they don't have the Yankees to root against. So I feel like that's, you know, not a a, a lot of non-Yankee fans are like, no, we want them back in the playoffs because we like when they lose. So (laughs) yeah. Hate to watch you walk away. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised that the Cubs are up there too. Um, The Mariners were making a run after the all-star break. Obviously the Padres were a complete disaster from many fronts it was extremely shocking for all all involved remember locked on yankees hosts or locked on yankees hosts, locked on uh, baseball hosts voted padres number two in the preseason yeah yeah that was that was yep. uh that yep. was something i wish i kept my ballot i don't remember what i put i don't remember either i gotta imagine i had the padres up there i'm not gonna lie at least top I, five. Oh yeah no i'm pretty sure i had them top five yeah yeah or if not five six like somewhere yeah. in there yeah. yeah like i was all in on you know i was like i had the mets kind of high and yeah mm. yeah oh, we were all wrong we were all wrong shows what yeah. we know uh but yeah yankees prime for a comeback in 24 man maybe Let's hope so. maybe <laughs> depends on this off season that's for sure yeah. Okay. Uh, that's what MLB fans said about the Yankees. What are they saying about Rob Manfred and the game as a whole? That's next. Back here, our final segment on today's Locked On Yankees. Stacy, we're still talking about this athletic article. Again, it is linked in the episode description if you want to go check it out. It's a pretty simple read. It's not like a big read. It's really just scrolling through a bunch of test results. Uh, so it's kind of fun. Uh, this one, Stacey, now again, we're going to talk about the MLB side of things and how baseball fans are feeling about the game, especially considering a lot of changes from this past season. Uh, this first one, Stacy, how would you rate the job Rob Manfred has done as MLB commissioner from one to five, one being poor, five being excellent? The winner here was three, 35.1% of respondents. Excellent was 2.7%. Poor was 16.1. Stacy, where where do you land in this? I'm curious what you vote on. Are you one? Are you five? Are you somewhere in the middle? I'm somewhere in the middle. Okay. I'm, so, I'm definitely not five. <laughs> no. Um, and de- I definitely not a one either. I would say I would be like a three. Like I'm just right down the middle with him right now. Like he hasn't done anything egregiously bad in my eyes. Um, well, other than the ghost runner. But you know, other than that, he's wow. been fine. I'm very not in your camp. Oh, no, I know. I know. I'm I a one. <gasps> really? Yes. <laughs> I, I vote heavily one on Rob Manfred. Oakland. Oh, well, all right. Yes. <laughs> the entire Oakland mess. Yeah, that's true. He did. Yeah. Oh, see, I forgot that's about that. That's a mess. Okay. And I get that he is, you know, we work for the owners and all that, but. Oh, yeah. I want you know my what? commissioner to step up in that spot and force the team to sell just like they did in the NBA when the Clippers went through their BS. Yeah, that's what I want. I want yeah. the MLB to handle that side like how the NBA handled the Clippers. I forgot about um, the whole Oakland thing. I'm so sorry, guys. And I even have <laughs> the sell. I even have the sell T-shirt over there. So, all right, I'm changing it to a one. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I'm, I'm happy with the rules, but that's also the rules committee. That's not necessarily just him. That's the yeah. rules committee. Yeah, um, they did put this in that, by the way, I wanted to say, uh, the athletic put a quote uh, underneath that said, we asked the same question in our last survey in 2022. Manfred was blasted. 77.5% of respondents gave him a one or two, while only 3% rated him a four or five. Uh, and it also says, granted, that was in the middle of the lockout. Right. Yeah. (laughs) That obviously didn't help. Yeah. He was not Um, very popular then. (laughs) Yeah. Where are you voting on Manfred? Obviously the rules stuff changes. I'm in favor of, I've seen the praises of that for the last two years. Um, But just in general, that side of things, the Oakland thing to me, unforgivable, unforgivable. Uh, Okay. Uh, How does your enjoyment of consuming baseball now compare to 10 years ago? Stacy one to five, less enjoyable to more enjoyable. The winning number 35.3% saying four. So most people are enjoying baseball more now than they were a decade ago. And I a hundred percent agree with that. I don't know if I agree with that. I feel like, wow. I'm th- yeah, I feel like I'm a three. Well, let, let's, let's take out the, like the Yankee side of it, just like the game. Like obviously 2023 was not as fun as 2022, but like, as far as the game itself with all the changes and how the game is presented, how are you enjoying the game? <sighs> 
I don't know. I feel like it's on too many different services. Like there are a whole bunch of things. Like you never know from week to week when games are going to be like, you know, there was one week where the Yankees had like two games on Prime, one on Apple, one on Peacock, you know, then you have to search for the yes games and it's, I don't, oh God, I sound like a boomer, but I don't mean to. No, I no, you're those. right. You're right. They, they <laughs> asked about that, by the way. Yeah. They did ask about that. Uh, yeah. I'll just bring it up here quickly. Where do you watch the majority of your MLB action? Um, 47.6% said TV, like local TV national. 31% yeah. was streaming. And then 11.3% said other streaming, which in my mind is like Sports Surge, which is yeah. a website that exists on the internet and I've definitely never used before in my entire life. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like other streaming, like it, yes, it, you're completely right. You're completely yeah. right. Like yeah. it, it is a mess. It's a jumbled mess. The right stuff and the way Bally's going down. It's a mess. Yeah. Yeah. I also feel like because I'm doing more for work about baseball, it's not as enjoyable to me because I, okay. you know what I mean? Like, you know, uh, I mean, I was writing about baseball 10 years ago, but not doing what I do now where I really have to pay attention to it and talk about it nearly every day. So okay. yeah, like in that sense, it's less enjoyable for me. I also don't go to as many games as I did 10 years ago, which is also very sad for me. Um, so yeah, the, those are the differences for me. Uh, I feel like if circumstances were different, maybe I'd enjoy it more. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's different. It's just different. Maybe. Y yeah. Yeah. Locked on different. locked on therapy session. Uh our last one here today, Stacy. Uh, this is just a flex. I'm not gonna lie. If you made it to the end of the show, this is a flex for Steve. Uh, were these rule changes introduced in 2023 good for the game? They asked about the pitch clock. 66.8% of respondents saying five. Good for the game. Just like I said. Just like I said, Stacy. And you know when I said it on the second episode i was on this show february 28th take a look <laughs> i think everyone needs to relax everyone needs to relax yeah. it's we're all gonna forget about it it's gonna just be part of the game after a week a week we were over it and it was like this is just baseball now this is just how it is and it's fine and it was great it was actually better <laughs> it was actually better so we should check back next tuesday and see how things yeah, are going next week clock. we won't be talking about this <laughs> that was the second episode I was ever on, Stacy. Did I add the whole thing about how people were complaining about the nets and then within like, you know, when you sit near the net, like you notice it for the first maybe five minutes that you're there and then your eyes get used to having the net in front of you and it's not a big deal because I remember people bitching and moaning about that. Like, why do they have to have the nets all the way down the field? It's like, well, first of all, they're trying to save you from being killed by a baseball. But second of all, stop complaining about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because that was after Machado struck out when bases loaded or whatever on a pitch clock violation in spring mm -hmm. training. Yeah, February twenty eighth. Told you, I, I love looking back at the old videos, seeing how the show looked. <laughs> yeah, good look you, still. you and your little teeny square on the tiny side, tiny little <laughs> tiny little box. <laughs> uh, throw them in the corner. Just <laughs> stick stick the uncle in the corner in the, in the <laughs> basement. Uh, yeah, no, I was right. Told you I was right. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. We loved it last you year. Of course. Weren't even thinking about it. Past opening day, you weren't even thinking about it. No, really not. No, because nothing really happened. Like, there were nope. barely any violations after a certain point. Like, every once in a while, you'd hear about something, but no. Yep. yep. That's why you watch this show. There were a couple. I went back and watched that episode, obviously. Scrolled down. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to Danny Wagner, who I imagine is probably watching right now. Danny Wagner. OG, dude. Oh, gee, he was there in the comments. He's always part of our Fan Mail Friday uh, episodes. So I saw Danny in there. Like, cool. Yeah, so you, you saw me say that. You were there. Like That segment started with me being also like, hi, by the way, I'm Steve. <laughs> Don't forget I exist. I am new. Yeah. So, told you. Just wanted to flex. I was right. Uh, go check out that article. It's cool. Again, a super easy read. If you have The Athletic, go check it out. Um, I didn't vote on it this year, but I have voted it on years past. I usually like it, but it's, it takes a while, man. There's a lot of scrolling. I vote it on is. a lot of those athletic surveys. Uh, they're great. Yeah. They really are good. I love that they do them. Uh, I haven't seen one from Cuddy, but uh, hopefully they do one soon from the Yankees side of things. I'm curious to see where, where everyone's heads are at. Uh, on the Yankees, but um, let us know how you're feeling about these. Where would you rank them? Where would you put uh, your answers and all that stuff? I want to read them. Uh, so let us know in the comment section. Uh, and that's going to just about do it for today's Lockdown Yankees. I'm Steve Granato. And I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. We'll see you tomorrow.